Okay, my claim is new physics is here and it should be looked at as dipole electron flood theory. The Bohr model never worked, it doesn't predict gravity, it doesn't do any of those things. These are the particles, Fermi Lab and CERN, and everybody knows they're there, they just don't know what to do about it because they're hitting them head on and they're seeing a bunch of debris. We used light to start with, so we started with the tiniest particles that exist, and that is what we can see right there. And we see them actually dividing and becoming separate particles. The black and the white divide from each other. And originally they were right here together, glued together, gluons. I don't care what you call these things, they got a million names now. But this is the dark particle that Don Lincoln says, yes, it's a fixed particle. There it is right there. Absolutely exactly what he describes. And exactly what he describes here is the point particle that can squish down and get glowy and all that. It absolutely has some kind of a weight there because these particles make up everything there is. One atomic mass unit is approximately 1839 of these electrons. Now two electrons, one here and one here together, make a photon. And it doesn't matter what color it is. Color is just spin. And the faster they spin, the more blue shifted you get. The slower they spin, the more red shifted you get. Okay, my friends, so this is Don Lincoln, he's from Fermilab, and he's asking this question, what is energy? And I think I can show, which I will, and he is saying that photons are massless. Massless photons also carry energy. Well, the problem is that photons, I don't believe, are massless. Well, I can show you they're not massless, and I can show you the, the, the actual photons, and I can show you what they're constructed of, and they're made out of the particles that Don Lincoln talked about in 2013, and they are not massless. One of them could possibly be, I can't say it's not, but a photon in its entirety is absolutely not massless. He says they're just moving ripples in electromagnetic fields. You know, moving ripples have to be something there to move. There's nothing moves that is not there. Alright, so Don is saying that photons are massless, but they still have energy. Alright, now this goes back to 2013. This is actually from an article Don Lincoln put out. It's called, What's the Point? And they are point particles. <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, these are the actual particles. We took these with smartphones, which are, they're using them for muon detectors, cosmic ray detectors. And we did the same thing. So, you can see them, and there they are. But the only, the only reason we can see this is because of the radiance and the luminosity. You have to make them emit energy that is just not normally seen. So, and they, they see them here too, because they're hitting them head on with gigantic collisions. So they see them, and we can see them too, because we're crushing them in a venturi. Now all of this stuff I've explained many times, but this is from Don Lincoln from long ago, and these have absolutely, in my mind, they have mass. Now I'm going to just show you my theory about electron flood theory, and it's a dipole, and um, I'm just going to show it to you because I have it on paper, and you can go back and review it. Just go scroll back and forth and see what you think. All right, I hope you can see these. I'm just going to scan right through them. There's just one talking about new physics. It's here, and I show the different particles and how they react. And then this is how we did it, the material versus theoretical science in the pre presentation. Very controversial, yes. Development of the Venturi, which is the crusher, and Rod Warren did this. And he, this is how it was developed, and we used a smartphone for the detector. All right, this is the methods and the observations. We made observations, no just guesses. Methods, evidence, conclusions, claims. What methods did we use? What did we see? Why does it create a particle and a wave? What do these things look like when they're spinning through space? Well, what is energy anyway? Because this is what I started about. This is the reason I got involved in this and I want to put this out today. Is because Don Lincoln says, what is energy? I'm responding. Energy is the ability to do work, and there's different types of energy. I agree with him when he's talking about that. Then there's potential energy, kinetic energy, some of it just 
can become energy and some of it's actually doing work. And then what is mass? Mass is not anything like that they're thinking about. Mass is is a component of the weight of the item, what it impacts with, what it's going through, the temperature, all kinds of things affect the mass. Okay, my friends, this is a smidge hard to understand if you're not into physics. If you are into physics, and you've obviously heard of the double slit experiment where they shine light through two tiny little slits. And when the light comes out the other side, they see it interfere with each other's patterns. And they take this as a wave function of light. There's also a particle function of light, which they know particles of light are particles, but they also know particles of light make a wave. Well, I've shown this for many, many years, and it's the most simple thing to understand. It's nothing more than oppositional magnetism pushing and shoving. All right, I'm just going to make this short and sweet, and I'm going to keep doing it until somebody pays attention. CERN and Fermilab know about these particles, the big black one and the squishy little white one, and here they are right there in our experiments. This goes back to 2013. This is nothing new. It should be investigated, and I, I, I'm having a hard time dealing with it. It's not being. Now, this is light from a red pulsed laser. It's light. We started with small particles. They started with protons. Protons are gigantic compared to light. All right, These are the tiniest particles. They're all over here. Light is everywhere. And they are particles, and they have a magnetic field surrounding them, which makes a particle wave duality. That's why light has a particle and a wave. I'll show you that in super detail. This is from CERN. They wanted to see a muon neutrino and electron neutrino. There they are. The muon neutrino is the black one. The electron neutrino is the white one. Well, they turn into showers. The white one does. The black one doesn't when it hits of this. And they say, yes, when you hit, have Cheryankov radiation, which means coming in real hot, these are, bam, and they separate right here. One goes into showers and one stays the black ball. And here they were before they separated. All right, let's take it from the top to the bottom. Fermi Lab, CERN, every one of them. They know there's a big black fixed particle and a white little point particle. Absolutely agree with that. And there they are. There's the big black fixed one, and there's the point particle. Attached together, two of them back to back are just like bar magnets, identical, identical. And because they are bar magnets, they have a field surrounding way around them. And that field creates a wave as they go through the air but it's driven by the magnetic particle. And there it is right there. And I'll show you the wave that it creates, because we've done it all. all right, there's a wave right there. And now it's accelerating. I can show you not accelerating and how it interacts with the air surrounding it, which also is saturated with magnetic particles, because everything there is is made of the same thing, magnetic particles. All right, so once again, light from a pulsed red laser. Right at the very tip in here is that particle. And it's a magnetic particle, so these are all magnetic particles in the gases that surround it. Temperature is nothing more than extra electrons. These electrons get pushed out of the way. When they do, they glow a little bit. This glows a lot because this is the pusher. These get shoved out of the way, so they just glow a little bit. But as this goes through, it just has to push everybody out of the way. That's why you see light filtering through a barn and you can see it coming in the air. It's concussing with all the tiniest particles that are in the air. And they are also in this realm, because we're dealing with light, these are also electrons. Light is nothing more than two electrons back to back. I showed you that. And what does the tiniest little light particle look like? The ones we showed you that were glowing as that thing was coming through? They look just like this. These are photons, but photons are nothing more than electrons back to back. They will go through the air and not glue into stuff normally. They'll pretty much pass through the air, bouncing things away from themselves. A single electron is different. If you just had one of these, 
That's lightning. It goes right to ground. It's just bouncing its way down. It wants to get into the ground because the ground is the most has the most dark source to it. And that's what these want. That's gravity. So lightning goes to ground. All right? The earth is getting overcharged now, and we have lightning going up now. They're called elves and sprites, blue and red sprites. The electricity the, the Charge in the atmosphere is intense now because we're scrubbing like crazy through all the other particles in space, which are the same particles as these. So space is saturated with particles, and that's what's causing our overheating in the atmosphere. These are things they're not even taken into account. Very disturbing when they will not address it. I don't care if they come and say, oh, no, Roger, you're wrong because of this or that. No, they come up with these papers. Nobody's going to read in 100 years. And, and, and they refuse to look at the actual physical evidence. So here they are together, and they're coming very fast at our crusher Venturi. And when they hit the Venturi, they do this. They separate. This is the Venturi, and it's designed with two round cylinders here. And there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little space in between it. The white can get through and the black cannot. That's all it is. And that's what creates exactly what CERN and Fermi Lab have asked for. Right there. This is when they come in hot. This is when they smash into the Venturi. Electron showers of white. And the black muon ball continues on and reestablishes itself on this side again. That's what's called a sterile muon. Now, we did this. You cannot say that's not done because it is done, and that was seven years ago. And I presented this to every one of these places, and that supposedly if they're interested in facts, they should stand up. Not a one of them. Not a single one. And now they're criticizing me for, oh, look at a guy, big shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, finally you have to get nasty, yes. I'm not going to be pushed around by a bunch of people that couldn't care less about anybody else but themselves. And that's what's happened. That's what education has become. It's not a search for, for truth or reality. It is a search for cash. Okay, my friends, quick as I can do this. There's a black particle and then there's a point white particle. The black one never changes, as Fermi Lev says in CERN and all the rest of them. The white one squishes down and glows. There they are from our experiments. This is a photon of light. Half of this would be an electron. The other half is an electron. They are dipoles. When they come through the air, they glow. The leading tip glows. And if you can see that, maybe you can't. There's glowy little particles here that they're concussing into. When it hits the Venturi, the black and white particles separate. You see the black and white particles there? They actually separate here. And only the white can get through. And then they come back together. That's fission and fusion. I'm showing you the reason that light is a particle and a wave is that it, it, it is a magnetic dipole. As it pushes through all the other magnetic particles in the air, which are nothing more than magnetic particles, they glow because they have to get out of the way. Now, you, we can actually divide these just as CERN and Fermilab have done in their accelerator collider. We didn't have to collide them, we crushed them. We can do this in a much more simplified way than they're doing. I mean, whoa. And we, and we got the results that they were dying to get. But they just they can't get their mind off of using protons and neutrons. Even in this latest experiment, they double slit. Oh, we're not going to use neutrons because Roger's a crazy person. We'll show you that. And no, it didn't work. It just showed that I'm right. Because neutrons are nothing more than thousands of electrons. All right, let's sum it up. We are using light. That is light. And light is a photons. Now, they are using neutrons. <laughs> neutrons are thousands of particles of light. Light is the smallest particles that exist and exists of the muon and the electron neutrino. Together, they are what I call an electron. And that goes through wires, it drives electric circuits, it's, and together, attached two of them, is a photon. And the photon will bounce instead of electrocute you. If you've got enough photons on you, it'll burn you, yes. But if you've got enough electrons on you, the same number, they will burn you up and you'll explode from water will vaporize inside of you. So there's, there's two different components of the same components. 
they just get bigger and bigger. They call them particles zoo because when they collide their particles, there's thousands and thousands together, and billions really. And then they dig through all the debris. All right, this is what they're doing at CERN. They're taking huge particles, slamming them head on together, and then they see all of this debris. Every one bit of those, the tiniest bits, are the ones we're seeing every bit because all we started with was light. We didn't start with these gigantic particles. Huge, billions of times bigger. Okay, my friends, you know I have a lot of problems with physics. Physics is just completely wrong. You have to understand dipole flood theory, otherwise you're done. And this is, particle is a dipole, and as it reaches the venturi, it crushes itself, and only the white part of the dipole can get through. The black is too big, and it's a fixed particle. It's fixed. And we can see that because they come back and attach here. Now, what is energy? Einstein said E, which is energy, equals M, which is mass, times the speed of light squared. Where did that come from? No clue. However, energy is a relationship between how much something physically weighs, which we always think of as the mass, that is not the mass. What something weighs is just its atomic weight. The mass is what it interacts with. If it hits a, st a stone wall, boom, it's pretty well, there's a lot of mass going on there. If it hits a bunch of blankets and a pillows, it's and there's not much mass interaction. So the energy, which is what we're trying to get, is completely dominated by the fact of what the atomic mass units concusses with. And of course the speed. Anyway, this is, um, this is tr the true nature of light. And nobody can dispute this. If they will stop and pay attention and look and interact, this is the problem. I know they realize they're in trouble and they're going to lose funding and all kinds of things and status and so forth. We want reality, don't you? Don't you want reality? I was just at a site they'd been assaulting the hell out of me. Like, you know, and there's all people that think they, you know, oh, he doesn't even know about the Planck's constant. He doesn't this and that. Yeah. I know all about everything there is to know about electronics and energy, chemistry, thermochemistry. Let's talk. Don't hide. That's what's going on. They're hiding. And then they're assaulting me for being nasty. Well, I'm going to get nasty. I'm just going to do it every single day. So if you want to come up here and be nasty to me, you're gone. If you come up here and say, let's talk, let's get something going on, yes. But I want a forum. I want a big forum. I don't want to just talk to one person at a time and fight over and over. I want some big, big world platform where I can show my research, not just in this field. And that's what they were upset. Oh, God, think you're such a big shot. No, I think I'm the only one that can stand up against these people. I have the evidence. You people like to be pushed around and shoved around. Good for you. That's not happening to me.